the, the hip hop scenes book. And uh, I think so. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Everyone from the 90s is in there, plus. Yeah, and, the only yeah. person in the world, apart from the publishers, because this is one of two copies, this is an advanced copy. Yeah. And I'm not sure whether I was supposed to be going through it and being critical and saying what I don't like or what stuff. But, but unfortunately, in the few days I've had it, I am very much struggling to not like it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've done so much and well, the photos, it is you see them from somewhere and you're like, oh, I remember that photo. Wow, that's quite mad. ridiculous. It's ridiculous how much you've done. The killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Beatbox Creative. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen. Killer Keller Podcast live and direct. Central London or Central is what? Central as you need to be. Old tight, all the sharers and carers. Uh, if you're new, jump on, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, big shout out to everyone who's got the television app. Free download for your sporting art, street culture and more. Mini Docs, Big Docs, the DJ Mixes, and all the other things in between the podcast. Hey, we... <laughs> oh, let's begin with this gentleman. Uh, he's, he's a pioneer. Uh, I love him to bits. He's a friend of mine and uh, an unsung hero in the art uh, of what is the UK music scene. Uh, very early doors, influential, beyond beyond these simple words. If it wasn't for, for him, I wouldn't be sitting here doing it. That's a fact. My early stages in music, he was accompanying me. We were going all around the sundries, doing all sorts of shenanigans. Um, but prior to which, he's, uh, he's been a photographer, um, a, a presenter uh, among the stars, and there is a new book which he has quite rightly released all in good time. Thank goodness he has. It's one you need in your life. It's one that we've been waiting for. Mr. Normski in house. <laughs> <laughs> he got a book. Whoa! Oh, my God. Fire, fire. <laughs> Look at that. For yeah. those of you who are listening and watching, we currently have the only copy of the book that's in existence right yeah, now. Yeah, you can touch it. Yeah, yeah touch, touch it. it. Touch it. Norm, how are you? Sorry. I'm... I'm Feeling nearly not quite as heavy as that book is. Unscalable <laughs> amount of pages. Which even when he brought it out, I was like, oh, oh, mate, what the hell are you? Oh, my <laughs> days. Oh, my Incredible. Feeling. Yeah, I feel like that massive weight that was surrounding my being yeah. for the last few months of putting this book together, I feel like, actually right now, I feel like it has been released. Yeah. But I know, yeah. also can feel it in your hands. <laughs> That's weight has yeah. been on my shoulders, Damn. constantly. Probably that and a bit more, and plus my own body weight. Hence why I got a bad leg. I reckon. You've got a bad leg at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I've had a bit of a bad it's leg. All right. It's I, all right. There's nothing wrong with you. But I feel, right. I feel like if I have a real problem, I can use the book to prop me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Dude, this this will prop, I mean, prop up anything. It's right? a heavy weight. It's, it's a, a heavy weight. Heavy book. weight book. How many pages is that? 272 pages. Of, 272 pages? Yeah, which is, you know... Wow. 240 apparently is the perfect average right. for people. Um, and 272 is the, the most uh, before if you go to anything past that and then to the 300s, that's mm. too many pages. Really? Apparently. Well, people people can... The, yeah, it's not... It's, it's too much book. Mm. Um, I, I struggled with the concept of trying to squeeze the amount of photographs I have into that amount mm. of pages, mm. I really, really, as I say, struggled. It was the hardest job ever. Of course, because you've done so much. I mean, when you flick through, you're going to get the book, you're going to check it. It's, it, it's definably the, 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 the hip hop scenes book. And, uh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Everyone from the 90s is in there, plus. Yeah, and, the only yeah. person in the world, apart from the publishers, because this is one of two copies, this is an advanced copy. Yeah. And I'm not sure whether I was supposed to be going through it and being critical and saying what I don't like or what stuff. But, but unfortunately, in the few days I've had it, I am very much struggling to not like it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've done so much and well, the photos, you see them from somewhere and you're like, oh, I remember that photo. Wow, that's quite mad. Quite ridiculous. It's ridiculous how much you've done. It's, it's, uh, honestly, it's... I started halfway <laughs> in and I'm just flicking it reasonably quickly and... You know, when when you've been looking at something on a flat screen yeah. for building up for like eighteen months, yeah, um, you know, um, it's quite a strange feeling to to 
make that flat dimension. It's not even two dimensional, is it? A flat screen. It's like one dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scrolling up and down. It no must tech. drive you mad. Yeah. It was kind of crazy. Um, it, it didn't. It wasn't. It, it drove me mad at times, but it was actually really quite a lot of fun looking at stuff. You know mm. what I mean? But uh, how do you choose? How do you choose out of all that huge catalogue? You um. Well. With great difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you choose? First of all, I did, um, years ago, it feels like, I was really together in the lockdown, I remember. When I was in the lockdown and I knew I was going to, I need to do a book. Yeah. And I was thinking about it because I sort of had nothing else to do. Yeah. And I remember uh, getting this concise list together of uh, all my negatives. I went up to my mum's house. We had loads of stuff in the attic there. Oh, like, wow. I knew I had loads of eggs in the attic that were kind of kept safe there. Big up Mumsy. Oh, my goodness. And, um, I mean, all that. Then I, I had a lot of work, like, in another quite big agency, very big agency, actually, that had, had been there for a very long time. And I decided that, that I was... I just took it all out, mm. basically. And that took up nearly a year to do, to take that all down. That was quite a big deal because that, that was when I was kind of getting into this ownership thing of getting all my work back, getting, you know, all the stuff I'd done yeah. back in my control rather than, yeah, I kind of felt like a lot of stuff of great importance, like, you know, like my photography especially, mm -hmm. was just out there running around, sort of not really being in any particular direction. Yeah, yeah. And every now and again, I've done stuff over the last few years, <clears throat> like I even got reminded this month, uh, in 2018, I know it's five years ago, but uh, it was when Seth Troxler, he did a, he saw some of my work from the zine, Darker Shades mm. of Dark White Shades Zine. Darker Shades of White, which is on the wall, which has yeah. been there since the inception of the wall. And um, he saw Signed. that work, he saw that stuff and really loved it straight away. And he had the uh, Smoky Tales place on Hoxton Square, mm. which funny enough is right next door to what was um, Blue Note Blue on Hoxton yeah. Square. That's so right. I felt very comfortable in there as well, because I used to hang out there quite a lot with those yeah. guys. Yeah. So he did a show, we did a show in, in the Smoky Tales uh, called The Tales of Normski, <laughs> which was a, a, a small selection, it was about 16 shots that he picked out from a collection. So all around that time, um, I've always had sort of loads of lights on, on, the, on the work and I kind mm. of had a bit of control, but then it kind of like during the lockdown, I had time to like wonder what the hell was going on with my life and everything. As and, we all did, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so I started to get all of the... And that's really how it... it it's hard to describe, but I'm trying to describe. What, how did I get the pictures together? Well, I kind of, first of all, got all the pictures. Mm. Uh, and I knew the Museum of Youth Culture. I've got an archive in there, which is a lot of stuff as well. Um, and so, you know, there was, a, there was a big pool of my work around me. And I kind of, I was totally inspired. Like, so, you know, I did the zine. Mm. That zine was a limited zine. Mm -hmm. That's been, it's on, like... Print four now. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, it's featuring in photographer gallery shop. It's featuring in yeah. Somerset House shop. Crazy. And it's just like a zine, which yeah. I love. And it's and actually there's stuff in the zine that is not in the book, and vice versa. Mm. But then also, <laughs> the book is like about thirty zines. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> more than that. Wow. Um, I don't know. It's forty forty pages in the zine. Yeah. So yeah, actually, yeah. I did actually do the math, and and it's about eight of them. But um, to be fair. It's a different story, put it, putting a book together. Of course, because you've got a story from start to finish um, in a way. Yeah, I had to pick, I had to think about, I had to think about um, what I was going to put in the book, like what, what, why am I, you know, what my mum, why am I doing it? But, oh, I know why, because mm. um, there's a main part of my archive, which is really lively, that everyone's really just goes on and on about, which is the hip hop mm. sort of, golden age time that well, it's time it's a 30 year cycle isn't it so it's all yeah, relevant again isn't yeah. it yeah it's funny you say 30 year cycle it's nice for you to say that because then wow isn't it funny all these numbers because yeah. we're <laughs> currently in the 50th year of hip hop yeah there you go which is but, timely um, for you. but book. actually yeah but this could have been 20 years ago this book yeah yeah that's right um, but um, I think something was still going on 20 years ago so it's always been on the shelf. Mm. I hate to say it, that pun, but a book idea on the shelf, put it on the shelf. I had to get mm. the book off the shelf mm -hmm. so I can make it into a real book mm. so I could put it back on the shelf. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, this is... I remember when you said to me, Norm, actually, and it, it harks back to my first gigs at Jazz Cafe, and you said, it was your words, <coughs> you said to me, 
that's different gravy. That's different. You've done all these raves, you've done all these clubs, but the moment you step in a jazz cafe, it's almost like there's a regality. To all of a sudden, it's like a yeah. next level. It's a level up, and you you yeah. coined it better. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing, whatever. But um, that's the same to be said with books, isn't it? When yeah. You, when you've got a hard back, I mean, this is more than um, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I can't you know, different gravy. I, you know, this is so. I'm sitting there casually with you right now. I've had this book for less than five days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're still you processing. Can still, you can it, yeah. still smell the ink, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. It's um, fresh I paint, personally, paper. Like when I see here this picture here, which, which is, is ultra magnetic, right? Ultra magnetic MCs. Is that Dingwalls? Dingwalls yeah. in the middle of the afternoon. I went there early in the daytime mm. because that, if you want to get a photograph of a band, mm. and you haven't got, you're not with the band, but you're like into stuff. Because most people that are into it, they know what the band's up to. Mm. But a lot of people they pretend they're into stuff, and they turn up about five minutes before they go on stage, and they ask people, "Oh, do you know who the band are?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Bruv, if you don't know the band, you don't are, why know. are you looking for them? Yeah. Like, let's, let's so why are you even here? In the screen, no, so. hold on a second, because I'm well, just going to. Oh, just, you're going to read, yeah, this is really it, a yeah. thing I never thought I'd ever find myself doing. So, this is page 233, 232, two, yeah. and 233 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of um, my book. Love it. I love it. <laughs> and let, let, let me read it. Yo, bum, rush the show, mm. which is actually the following photograph. Which is a famous mm. shot of Dingles where the now back that... door is getting bum rushed, ultra magnetic MCs. How gig. you got a photo of that? I well, have no idea. I know how because I was at the front waiting for the band to come on. This was the infamous event that took place at Dingles in Camden yeah. where the doors got absolutely bum rushed. Obviously, yeah. they'd have a capacity for the people that were coming in yeah. and it just went off. Crazy. The ultra magnetic MCs. Who else was supporting? Uh, was, uh... I think it was Steezo. There you go. And. So I wrote this, a great saying, Yo Bum Rush the Show, a great saying that we all know from your debut studio album by Public Enemy in 1987. I remember when I first saw the album cover and realised it was taken by one of my favourite photographers, Glennie Friedman. I had seen his work in the late 1970s and early 80s as he shot most of the wildest skateboarding photographs, which inspired me in so many ways. He also shot some early Def Jam record sleeves too. I titled the Ultra Magnetic MCs photograph after the Public Enemy album because this was one of the most intense examples of the backstage door being rushed. In 1989, if you knew your hip hop history, then you knew you had to be at the show. Of course, the venue Dingles in Camden, London wasn't going to be big enough for the amount of fans that wanted to go, and the place was duly packed to the rafters. Dingles Dance Hall had always been a venue renowned for bringing new music to its intimate stage, but this night, it had more than just the four artists on that stage. Even I had to jump up on stage to avoid the crush. But in true professional style, as they say, the show must go on. There was no way of telling who had paid and who hadn't. Wow. And I think Ultramagnetic MC thought it would best just to do the show as the energy was so high and everyone was just wanted to enjoy the greatness they had. Yeah. I had actually gone to the venue earlier in the day as I wanted to try and get a group shot of the Ultramagnetic MCs and to meet them while they rehearsed. This is a smart move as they were wearing outfits designed by the legendary Harlem tailor Dapper Dan. Wow. And damn, they did look fresh. Yeah. The group, Cool Keith, Said G, DJ Mo Love, and TR Love, were so different sounding to all the other artists in the game. By the time I got to the witness them live in 1989 with their complex rhymes, funk breaks, and heavy drum samples. Wow. So that's Ultra Magnetic. Now, I what wrote this. Story. Yeah, you wrote that? Years ago, wow. ages ago. It feels like years ago, ages yeah. ago, but I was there, and it's like a memory. I was there, and I wrote, and now I remember the memory. You wouldn't remember it the same way, would you? You know, the whole day I went there early, shot that photograph of them here, looking super dope. You know, look at that shot. You know, you've seen shot. that. Look at that. It's mad. You, and then they got the old school. Uh, mobile I go to the phones. gig late. I think I actually yeah. went home because I lived in Primrose in those days. That's a short farm, so on, I went yeah. home, uh, and then I came back to the gig later that night and ended up on the stage while it was being rushed. Part of the uh, part of the um, protocol of a photographer is the opportunist. You know, you got to be at the right place at the right time, innit? Yeah, I think that you, if you're, yeah, that's right. So it's like being a singer. <laughs> yeah, 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 you, you could sing, but you could be singing in the bathroom, which is the right place at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Not if you're wanting an audience. <laughs> so in a way, to get photographs, you have to um, uh, illuminate. Uh, illuminate. You have to uh, get rid of, um, eradicate the question. Mm and go to the answer, which is to be somewhere and with a camera. And, and without a doubt, if you're somewhere with a camera, you're going to take a really good photograph because you've, you're there, that's it. 
as soon as you're in a place of no camera, you're probably going to experience some amazing things, but you're not going to catch anything that's not for, that's not going to, you know, you're not going to get any images unless you use your phone. So that's just a memory, you know, so it's not really a picture. I guess when you're, when you're, you know, a prolific, you know, photographer, it's your day job. Yeah, I, get, I guess you get more hung up on what you don't. Yeah, take. you know, you know what, you know what. It, it, actually, you, you know, if I was on an assignment and I've been called out to go and do something, I might well not have taken that photograph. But as it happens, I call myself yeah. out, yeah. and uh, I was like, "Oh, Ultra Magnetic MCs are playing at Dingles tonight, and I know how it works. Around about three o'clock, they'll roll in the um, the back line." Like bands, they turn up mm. for sound check. Yep. Straightforward, man. I don't know yeah. how people don't get it. It's not deep. Just it's, get there at five. Get there so, at four. And you know <laughs> what? You'd be so surprised. I've met so many artists at that irregular time, and they're yeah. like, "Yo, who are you?" And I'm like, oh, "My name's Norm Skid. I Just take photographs. How are you guys? Are you enjoying London? Oh man, yeah, man. We love your city or whatever. Mm. And uh, you just, you know, and then you know, before you know, it, I'll help you. You're carrying a. a you know, like yeah, a, yeah, a flight yeah, yeah. case in helping the guy out. He's like, yo, thanks for that, because no problem, man. Yeah. A lot of people, like, they have to be told or asked to do something. Yeah. And that's not ever how I've ever rolled. I've always just gone and got involved. And I think that's what uh, happened with a lot of the photographs is, is, you know, I took an opportunity to go down to somewhere. Bro, they could have been like, no, you know, no, we, we ain't going out taking the fucking photographs. Mm. So I actually said to them, would you mind if I got some photos? I was going to come to the show later, but would you mind if I took some photos? Like, you know, and I had no idea. When they came to the show later... They were wearing suits. They had a whole mm. different look going on. There's another shot of them live, actually. So it's almost like you took the photo in a different time, a different place. Bro, it wasn't you, anything you could have been a different show. year. Wow. Been, exactly. It's two groups. It's two sides of the group. So nothing, again, nothing's more. Nothing emphasizes that more than the, the Wu Tang photos that are in the in the in the book because they look so. It's almost like they could have been anywhere in the world. They were so natural. Well, the chess shot. Yeah. Yeah. There's crazy. that shot which is backstage, but it's again that thing where everyone knows about the whole, you know, the chess and their love for chess and. That whole kind of hanging out with together kind of stuff, and again, where you could want to get a shot of them all posed up, like looking like the Wu Tang mm. Clan, you know, like a big. I would have loved to have got a shot like that, but as it happens, we couldn't get out of that backstage area, and it, and it was actually very difficult for me to get any photographs because they were not in a good frame of mind, did not want to do any photographs. Really? Yeah, they, well, they were all there. There was not but missing. That they did want to play chess. Really? So that was a really important part of the story because I went there with um, Andy Cowan, who was at that time the editor mm -hmm. and main writer for yeah. Hip Hop Connection, who also contributed some really lovely words for the book as well. A lovely man. Um, and also dug deep and went, he even went into his garden shed after like 10 years of not going into it. You know, he, he went into it and he, he had a request from someone else asking for something to do with the magazine. And so he said, look, and I'll, I'll get on it. And about six months later, he was like, yo, yeah, I'm going to get on it now. And I remember reaching out to him really early on. And then, he, you know, and then he came back out with that Wu-Tang shot from 1980 fucking nine, whatever it was, Ooh, that I hadn't wow. seen. I hadn't seen it. This is what people, what I'm trying to show people is, is when I tell you about having a full lobotomy, um, <laughs> where you literally, you know, you know, maybe like I had some body replacement or something. Mm. Like this has been a, a, a physical and emotional journey getting this book out into paper. Mm. It's been quite unbelievable. Like, number one, the amount of memories that it's going to evoke for other people, I mm. don't know, it's going to freak them out, but you, you just watching you look at it before was just ridiculous. Mm. Um, Incredible. Uh, it was actually ridiculous. So much so you you walked off down to the shop with yeah. it under your arm, like <laughs> you just bought a new. Book. Lucky you were right outside my front door. No, I, I knew you were going to come back. <laughs> Got that walking stick in, going to make you run I faster knew, than no, me. No, <laughs> I was not going to run after you. I knew you were going to come back. Yeah. But it was quite a moment to know that you were kind of bopping down the road to go and get you know some juice and stuff mm. with my book mm. under your arm, mm. and. Uh, it was like a, that's the relief. That's like whoa to watch to watch mm. you happy with this book did feel like whoa because it's literally like honestly it's been some heartfelt yeah, shit yeah. going down. Because no one there. else has seen it apart from us, right? Well, here. the other thing as well is is that the nerve wrackingness of of doing something. It's like I said before, and I've said it before as well. When I tried to describe it, someone asked me already. What's you know what's it like? You know, how what's it like making a book? Like as well, just talking to most people I know in the music industry. And I said, you know, if you can imagine trying to pick from your, well, you've got 300 tracks. Mm. Like, so you're going to put one album out, you've got 14 tracks on it. Possibly. What 14 tracks out of the 300 yeah, are you yeah, going to yeah. put on that album? So until we actually had a final deadline, 
And when I was given the opportunity, thanks to ACC Art Books, by the way, who have actually... Big it up. Very, very heavyweight. Get this on Amazon and everything yeah, this no, month. Yeah, they're heavyweight publishers, really. They yeah, do, they you are. know, a lot of music and a lot of passion-led books where they kind of publish books with that they like and they believe in. Mm. A lot of it's art stuff and, and, and a lot of those high-end sort of books as well, which are, again, about you know, like watches or mm. Jaguars or whatever. But, they're you know, the kind of... It's like the hobby end of it, which, funny enough for me, relates a lot to my photography, mm. where... It was a hobby. Mm. So the same thing, like, you know, I was beyond hobby stage when I shot Ultra Magnetics, but trust me, when I f woke up that day, my in my mind's eye, knowing I had a little dark room and everything, I was like, that Daniels is literally down the canal from where I live. It's like a 10 minute walk max. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and check it out because they might be there. Yeah. I'm going to go down there, like, I'm going to go and go to, you know, a little hip hop jam and see what it's like, you know, with my camera. Because mm -hmm. I, I weren't from the hip-hop, I was from somewhere else. I was That's from right. the art or somewhere, I don't know yeah, where it's from. And then not only is there hip-hop in the book, we, we, you know, there's a the definitive timeline that runs into, you know, the house scene, the drum and bass, you've got Stare MCs, you yeah. need three, and, and um, DJ Rap, for instance, which great story about DJ Rap, actually. Tell oh, that yeah, that, That's well, awesome. the rap, the shot I've got at Charisse of is... Uh, around the time when, obviously, she was doing very well in the drum and bass scene, but there weren't a lot of, you know, female DJs getting any props whatsoever, to be honest. There yeah. were quite a lot of female DJs, no doubt, yeah, but not yeah. a lot compared to the amount of male DJs. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it was all proper rough and ready, you know, back in them jungle days, mate. You know what I mean? It yeah. weren't like some trendy thing that it seems to be a lot of the time now. Mm. I mean, check out Foxy's podcast last week. He's got some wild stories about yeah, drum and bass no, back then. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. But anyway, when, when I just uh, um, she used to do a shoot, DJ Rap, I asked her if I could do a shoot. I think I asked, and she was really up for it. So we kind of just planned to just see some nice photographs that weren't for, you know, I think I probably said that she might have actually wanted some press shots done. So we had that agreement where I didn't charge much or anything. It was mostly just expenses. And then actually my girlfriend at the time, she came in on here in makeup, so we treated it like a proper shoot. So, you know, even when you're, like, professional, I think it's like you do test shoots and stuff for... You do your work with artists that haven't got budgets, you know what I mean? You just mm. do stuff, mate. It's all about, you know what I mean? So with the shoot with with, with um, DJ Rap, it was very much about let's just have a laugh and see what we come up with kind of mm. thing. And, and hair and makeup went a bit crazy on one hand and went into this whole kind of Asiatic look, which was quite interesting because mm -hmm. it was completely miles off of anything to do with music and anything such and more beauty. Yeah, like. it almost became a beauty Yeah, shoot, and um, Well, then I sort of went into like um, ID fashion days, like yeah. when I used to shoot with ID. But Crazy. I ne never really used to get to shoot fashion. I did shoot a lot of style-led stuff and it was mostly kind of DIY style. Rather than to use the word street every five seconds, it was, you know, it was like homegrown stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? And so... That's kind of like that hobby angle, isn't it? Where you so kind of do, you do it. Oh, let's do a photo shoot. Oh, what should we do? I don't know. What's your favorite outfit? That's literally what I said on that one. I said, look, let's do something. What's like your favorite outfit you want to go out in? Like you like when you go out and you mm. really dress up, you are really ladylike, and you give it full on rather than it being all like kind of ragger, jungleist, you know, baggy jeans and whatever. Mm. Let's go the other way. And so she just went in her bedroom and sort of got, came out with this outfit on and I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I said, can't so speak, I, can't lie. Those photos said, were being taken. Let me, just, <laughs> let me just put my shades on, yeah, and <laughs> dig out the picture. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, so let's... she went full beauty and yeah. then I went all um, film noir. Mm, yes, you did. I went film noir on that side. You went right in on it. It's at the end of the book. Right? It is, Mysterious. there it is, right. So we, we must get yeah, this up Yeah, then close. you get an angle on that. There we go, let's get it. Um, this is, this give you an idea. So, and what I did, what it was, is we did the shot. She's looking at herself in the mirror, um, checking, putting her high heel straps, pulling her straps together. You know, like she's going out. Look, that is actually quite high fashion stuff. It is high fashion stuff, yeah. She probably. kind of actually, <clears throat> she unfortunately, it, yeah, you can see the leg. You, she doesn't look like she's naked, which she isn't. No, she's not. She's yeah. actually wearing a gold well, latex the, the mind dress. fills in the blanks. She doesn't look naked. But, but yeah, the, there's so much beauty to yeah, wear about right, yeah. nakedness, and there's no, yeah, right. you know, there's no like booby and all that stuff no. flying around. No. What but there is, is a lot of yeah outside. Uh, well, yeah. Things. What I've done is I've gone crazy with it because I've done this, got this, done a shoot. And we treated it quite professional. I remember mm. getting them professionally processed at Metro, who mm. I used to use a lot. So I take glasses off now, but it was just mm. I knew, it was <laughs> the, the photograph was on fire, literally, because what happened was is when I, I went to a Metalheads night one night and uh, 
I came back from Metalheads and I totally drum and bass out of my brains. And I came back and I remember looking at the print and that's when I lived in Old Street and the studio and I had a studio there on Old Street above, next door to Mother Bar. Awesome. Um, and uh, 331. That's it. And um, Which is next door to 333. Free free. Free. But yeah. that was the days of, yeah, the studio and, um, and, and I had a dark room in there and, um, and I could just work any, any time I wanted to do anything. I just was just so creative there. And I remember coming back from that jam and going into the, and looking at the print and thinking, no, that's, that's dry, man. Mm -hmm. Something's not right about the picture. It was just, just looked too clean, too, and I just freaked out a little bit. I was punch drunk anyway, and mm -hmm. I remember turning the D&B on and I was looking at the picture and thinking, I need to mess that up, man. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be asked to go and do a quick reprint or anything. So, I, and I remember, because the prints were made at Metro, I had some 10-8s done. And the legs and everything, and I got them back. And I remember looking for him again, going, "Nah, man," because I was like, "Nah, it ain't me." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. then, what I did was I, uh, I got the lighter, <laughs> lighter, I got the lighter out of the picture, and I went, I basically went mad. Yeah, I had, yeah, yeah. had some wine, I had a bottle of wine, bottle of wine as well, bust mm -hmm. of red wine, probably burnt a bifter as well. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, and I put it in, I was like, the drum and bass is it. And I was looking at the picture, thinking, "What can I do with it?" And I think, you know what? Rapper. I'm going to fuck this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Boom. And I set fire to the edges and I had this idea to make it look like it was an old, yeah. you know, like an like old... Like it had been in a fire because... Yeah, well, no, because you know what? 95, a year later, I had a fucking fire, didn't I? So I attempted fate there with that picture. Wow. And they burnt the whole fucking Self -fulfilling flat Self-fulfilling prophecies. That's the time when that's my first oh. death was right there. And I did not want what was in the flat, gone. Um, how, so, uh, well, we'll, we'll get into that in a <laughs> no, second. No, we won't so. get into that. But <laughs> the, before the fire came on that event, what I did was I got the red wine and put Doused it out. It. Really? Yeah, because it was is that burning. What all this is right Bro, here. This is like burnt. That's this amazing. Print is burnt. Wow. Right, is, I've got the original the print. Red. That's a lot. That's what I wanted to do. Was just get yeah. the kind of crackle, but it got a bit carried away and it looked like gunshots, and it just burnt out it the whole did, print. Yeah. There so what? Go. I would. So you can see I've nearly destroyed the print. Yeah. Then I threw the red wine on. You can see bits of red wine in it. And then to dry it, I put it in the oven. So I put the oven on like a pizza. I just put it in the oven just to dry the print because it was getting, it was getting like, it was all flaky. It was a shame because all the bits of flake overburnt it a bit. And I still had that. I tried to keep That's that stuff as well. Bit, yeah. I tried to keep it. Anyway, what I did was then I then took it down. I explained what I do in the yeah. book. You have to, I'm not going to tell anyone how I did no, no, it. No, 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 no. Let them buy the book. Yeah. And find out I did the rest of it. But you pretty much get the, the tale of the story. And, and basically, that was, that's how I felt afterwards. And I, that's the picture of, that is DJ Rap. Female jungle DJ bunning up the place. <laughs> Can I ask you something, Norm? Because you know, to be a photographer of this level in which your your content, the amount of snaps you've amassed, and, and you know, you're able to do a book to this size. Yeah. I mean, you're a celebrity. Uh, your fame procedure. We go, you know, with four or five cars honk, honking as whatever we're sitting outside is, on a coffee. Yeah. yeah, whatever that is, because you are you're one of us, man. You're, okay. you're always out on the street. You're always ever present. It's like an energy. You kind of have to be to be able to take these sorts of photos yeah. naturally, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, definitely. I guess. Uh, I just saw her side of her face. There. I forgot she's looking at herself in the mirror. It's very interesting that um, you're, you're but yeah, able you're, to. Yeah, it's it's well. I think there's another thing in there somewhere. Where I say it where um, you know, I, I kind of. When I think I was taking the pictures to impress other people, yeah. so that it was always about other people. You know, the pictures weren't actually about my photography. Mm. It was about trying to capture the other people get, mm. get around me. And when you realise, then you're like, oh, fuck, what have I gone and done? I've only gone and done a thing where if I catch them badly, mm -hmm. you just, you know, so then you have this fear all the time of representing people well, which is that edge of darkness, which is that edge of, you know, either liking the idea of having a challenge because it's not really a, a, it's not a negative or a problem. It's nothing to fear at all. It's actually a really exciting moment to be able to share that, whatever it is that other people do, whether it's them performing or mm. the way they want to look or, you know, because a lot of photography is, is of the way people, but, but of people particularly, is the way they, as the way they look. Mm. So some, you know, a lot of people make an effort a lot of people, some people don't make an effort and they look amazing. Yeah. And, but, and, and those are the like shots. Like me, you know. So it's like like, there's a shot here where people, they've made an effort of their own thing, but it's not about, they're oh, just yeah, having yeah. a rave. Is, yeah, this is an amazing photo. Yeah, well. they're just at a rave, these, yeah. these, these girls. Sisters. I call yeah. it Jungle Sisters because I was at a jungle rave. But they, is it, that that they're is just a snapshot. It's like mid-90s, bruv. They're yeah. just out 
raving and I've just boshed the shot off, you know what I mean? Like, kind of in the middle of the dance floor because that's the kind of thing I would be doing. But yeah. more, more time, there's a lot of photographs like that that I never did take because... I didn't really go there to take pictures of the people. I always go there to take pictures of what was going on. Going on. And often I, I missed pictures of people because I was too busy looking at who was performing yeah. or running around DJs or, you know what I mean, around the back. Or my other problem with being in um, correct, being active and productive is, is that I always seem to feel like I was working. So yeah. I've always kind of become part of the team. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm a team player in that sense. So, you know, so that's where I get to do the production photography. I think that all came from me, from the photography, though, was is that, that came first. So I was obviously productive and active amongst other people. You know, you like, like, a lot of these shots. Yeah, yeah. If it weren't for other people, I'd never have got the shots. Right. I mean, I met these two guys because they were neighbours to me, but they became friends. But then it was very quickly that it turned out that they were two of the first U London boys. Yeah, scam graph. Yeah, and yeah. scam as well. Yeah. Um, and so, it's you know, and, right now. You know it's that kind of, and, you know, Bunny Bread, mm -hmm. non-stop artists. That was a really early hip-hop jam, the hip-hop uh, Youth Against Apartheid, Hip-Hop oh, Alliance. There's BDP, bit of uh, um, one there. Yeah. There's a lot, so... Wow, I just... You know, you could just flick and there's another <laughs> iconic shot. Derek B. <laughs> it's it's mad. Um, MC Duke. MC Duke, that's yes, it. all right. <clears throat> MC, I, <clears throat> there's a couple of other shots. You know, it's like... What I tried to do, which was where... Going back to your previously we mentioned about um, choosing pictures. Yeah. It was always important to try and get some shots, which I had kind of promised them. And it's something that they, you know, obviously... They, the book wants to try and bring something new yeah. as well. So, yeah, the sleepy bus. Yeah. That's this, I, I, mean, I was talking about this the other day to someone where it's very important, the madness of this is, is that Bismarcky, Roxanne Chante and uh, Big Daddy Kane, I think possibly the shot mm. before is a double-page spread. Of yeah, yeah, it, it both is, asleep, it? wasn't it? Big Daddy yeah, Kane, Big Daddy Kane asleep. sleeping on the tour on the bus. same. You know, can I can I just um, <laughs> yeah, because this is an important shot to me because. Um, I were, it must have been 92 when it officially aired on Westwood, but it was... Um, Is that Bismarcky? Cold Chillin' Tour, Bricks, I think, no, Hammersmith. Uh, uh, yeah, probably yep. Hammersmith. Um, yeah. And they were performing it live, and that was where I first heard Beatbox. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, man. So the fact that you had this photo and you were on that Do you tour... Really? I reckon you might have heard yeah. Beatboxing before then, but that it, was it when it live. aired. Just oh, live, just Oh, OK. I'd never heard... You'd hear yeah, because you're record. right, you're right. It's, uh, it's early enough for stuff, you'd have to, yeah. But the impact was, like, few was gigs. crazy. Yeah, changed my life that that well, one recording. That's my thing to think actually that that so you you got the photo of the time that I got into. Well, beatboxing. you know, and to flip it, <laughs> they're Crazy. fast asleep. Roxanne, yeah, 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 yeah. they all asleep, sucking their thumb. She's like, what? I see all the like, 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 there's an Elton John yeah. CD there. Houdini, Obviously, that was the most modern player that yeah, you get at um, the time. Houdini, yeah. man, you know, I think that was the thing about Biz, even in sleeping and sleeping, he's listening to music. And to be honest, I, I actually don't remember there being a lot of awake time on that that bus. But, you know, I got it. You know, I realised again, I learned about jet lag before I really flew a lot, that when American people came here, oh, this is the there would be a moment Look when there that. would be a human. <gasps> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you just got to wait. Well, that was the madness of it is, is you know, who's going to get on a tour bus with the cold chilling crew it's and rare. take photographs of them sleeping? Everyone's going to take photographs of them posing or away. I don't know. Um, and that was... My way, that was my way of showing the human side of those eyes. You know, it was that I think people kind of look at artists and, or, you know, as if that's all they are and they have to be, be performing all the time. Mm. And uh, I was very lucky to be around these people and I always didn't, I, I don't know, I always, maybe because I got used to being around, you know, special people yeah, a lot, people, but yeah. I treated them. Everyone's, I've treated everyone's like they're all special. A lot of people, like, I think I'm being weird, but I'm not, no, everyone is actually really special. And so I think that that might have been why I, I would, they would have been comfortable with me. I, you know, you don't ask me, how the hell did I get on that bus? No, no, yeah, yeah, how did you get how, on the how bus? How did I get on the tour bus? <laughs> how, but these are, these are other stories. How do you get on the tour bus? It's mm. impossible. Um, you're, you're <laughs> a, it is, isn't it? I mean, you're a future Ford cat. Um, you've done this book and you must, there must be, be a few moments in your head. I thought, wow, this this could never happen again. But maybe it could. What's your what have you taken away from the book that you could reapply into modern day? Uh, you know, 
social media photo or whatever. You know, because you're into uh, you're into all sorts of stuff. You you just like what, you, you like imagery. Like if I just looked at the book, yeah, and what, what would, would you I... take? Yeah, what would you take away, <laughs> Lisa? Is that, I would you know, say as you're doing I, I need another week. <laughs> <laughs> I just need that I would one need last page. Week to actually just realise the dynamicness of the of the of the mid eighties, that golden era. Mm. You know, and also the naiveness and the the Charm. the casual mm. just this is how we be about society. You know, that shot of the cassettes. That, yeah, the cassettes. The cassettes came before the decks. We're not gonna show me. you because you need to get the book, you understand. Yeah, We're the cassettes. talking about it. I, I would say that you get a really it's yeah. more than just a, a view for a keyhole. That's right. It's kinda like you get in the room yeah. at a time where these really young, innocent, innocent. very, very talented individuals yeah. had no idea just they were how doing. big yeah. they were gonna be. In twenty years from the moment I took these photographs, and actually, Norm, the same could be said for you. Your your career spans so honestly, much. Man. I'm a mirror. Mm. All I'm doing is reflecting the world around me. And to be honest, I think we all really are. And I've been very blessed to be able to uh, do it in you know uh, music and, and 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 vision with respect to what I've done, and that is really a kind of musical vision right there. Mm. Um, a son of golden age, mm. time of our lives. Uh, it's basically a catalogue that I would take away from that of of the beginning of the just kind of new generation of, of of the people that we have now. You know, that is like the kind of blueprint yeah. of what's the word? Contemporary youth and culture. You know, it incorporates. It's not about mm. the seventies. It hasn't got that seventies. It's, it's definitely eighties and to the nineties when just street just came from the street and just got hype, mm. but it just cuts off before it turns into money, which is probably why I put the money on the money on the, the alcoholics, uh, ironically, um, because uh, yeah, y- drugs and money. <laughs> right? Well, you know, I, I just saw it's a money shot. It's the money shot, and it's ironic, isn't it, that it's an American act in London. And they got 10 quid to go to the pub with, and they're called the alcoholics. And I laughed. I said, you ain't going to get much for that. Yeah. And they were like, really? Because they'd never been to England before. So I just thought it was quite... Because a lot of that is uh, the view of a time from a Londoner's eye. Mm. And a lot of the stuff is taken in London. It's a lot of people out of their comfort zone in a new environment. And I think the whole thing was a new environment. That really did put, you know, I forgot about the flavor, flavor on the back there. Mm, fantastic. Um, and you know, like really, he's like we're in North London at some studio. He's kind of, you know, it's flavor, flavor. I know, but it actually, it could have been any one of my mates. Mm-hmm. In, in actual fact, you never realize that years later you might bump into people and or they know you. And they remember you from from yeah. that, you know. So you know, that's what I love about hip hop and the kind of the whole, you know inner city sound of people is it really it is a voice that mm. is universal and it's a it's a connection mm. so on that note if you want it go get it it's an amazon the godfather street culture is here not to <laughs> tell you so uh this is definitive go get it it's amazing trust me man well worth it every single page the man with the golden shutter mr norm's gear that place big up make some noise <laughs> We are like, it was out of fashion. We're going to go and chill. Mm-hmm. Uh, soak up a bit more sun. You guys, stay lucky. Go get the book. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Remember, crime don't pay. Oi. Neither do they. <laughs> Cheers, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> Big up, brother. Bless up, brother.